Hi, this is Belinda with Belinda's Bobbles, and yes, it is a Sunday, and I am off work. It's the afternoon, actually, and I am on my way back home after Fiber Day at On The Lamb Yarn Shop. I was hanging out there for a few hours, working on a few things, and I just wanted to come on and figure this was a good enough time to chat while I was heading home before life just, you know, goes crazy again. I hope you enjoyed yesterday out at the alien graveyard. Sam was a really good sport helping me out with that and I had a blast when we were down in Waco recording my little intro in front of the mural at the, it's like Twisted something. I can't remember the name of the, I'll put it down below, but it, it's the back mural of a restaurant that was right next to our hotel. And I just came across it, and I'm like, okay, this would be perfect. This really would be perfect. Um, but I hope you enjoy my hijinks. Uh, yesterday was a pretty good day. Um, I didn't get a chance to really talk to you guys other than um, out at the alien graveyard. I did something new. Uh, Heather at On The Lamb Yarn Shop had asked if I would teach a crochet class because the teacher was out sick and she didn't want to have to cancel it. It was a beginner, beginning crochet class. Well, I've never done a full class. I've taught one-on-one. -on -one. So I said yes, was nervous about it, but I really did enjoy it. Um, met five great ladies and they all took something away from the class, uh, different levels depending on their um, crafting background. But it was exciting to get that chance, and I can now say that I have been a teacher, <laughs> crochet teacher, um, on my resume. Yeah. <laughs> and I definitely am going to try that again. Um, I'm hoping to do it again um, there at On The Lamb. I'm more confident in my crocheting since I've done that longer than in my knitting. But at the same time, I was having to reteach myself how to crochet properly so that I could teach others how to crochet properly instead of hodgepodging it together the way I have most of my life. Basically, the difference is I know you're supposed to hold your yarn in your left hand and hook it either with the knife or pencil with your right hand or your dominant hand either way. The way I crochet is I'm a thrower. I throw it over with my right hand and hook it with my right hand and I'm just holding my project with my left. But because of that it limits how fast I can crochet so I'm a slower crocheter than I would be otherwise and it also means I'm making motions with my hands that's what's causing carpal tunnel issues. So I've sat there for two days getting ready for this class, reteaching myself the correct way. Seaver volunteered and let me um, teach him a bit Friday night so that I could kind of work through a few things and be able to move ahead. And it was exciting as far as the beginner crochet class took them from learning how to um, chain, some of them all the way up to half doubles and triples, some to single and doubles. So everybody got something out of it. But that's my story. Today I have for you a little video to add on that I recorded this morning. And before I forget, I'm wearing my secret summer crop. One of my three secret summer crops that are my favorite to wear. And what I have that I'm going to add on here is a video of me making a scrappy Christmas advent so that I figured, you know, Christmas in July, it's a good time to do the scrap, um, to put together an advent. And this was just an advent using what I have at home. All right, I will see you guys tomorrow. 
and I'm going to pass you over to myself in the past for you to be able to see how you could put together your own scrappy advent. Okay, so I have a bit of a project for us today. Uh, since it is Christmas in July, I want to get my scrappy advent ready for Christmas. And I want to, by the time Christmas comes along, not remember what's in here. So I'm going to get it ready now. And you can use anything. I'm using 20 gram scraps or um, mini skeins. And I was able to find enough just random mini skeins for a 24 um, count advent. I was just missing two. So I found two scraps that are 18 to 20 grams. One of them's 30 and one of them's 18. So it'll all work out because this is a scrappy project. And my plans is a scrappy knit um, shawl that I saw last year uh, that others were making and I really liked it uh, just because it was so random. This is random. <laughs> It's by different um, dyers. I've got Heathered Handmaids, My Yarny Corner, Hank Me Home Tonight. Uh, let's see, Handmaids. I have these are uh, minis that are botanically dyed from, or period dyed rather instead of botanically, but their period died that I got at uh, Scarborough Fair. Uh, there may even be, I mean, I, I think this is Louisiana Yarn Guys. Uh, I can't remember the stripey dyer. This, she's down in Houston. I'll put her name down below. And I think there may even be some uh, Charming You in here, which would be good because I actually have my Charming You Advent Box. This was my Charming You Advent Box from last year. She took us on a trip around the world, and I've saved all of the little suitcases. I've just pulled the names off of them, and I've saved all the numbered airplanes. So... My plan is to put one of each of these minis into a suitcase. It does not have a number attached to it. Then I am going to just toss them around and attach random numbers to them. And then after they have numbers attached, put them back in here in numerical order. I won't have a clue what's in each of these for each day. That way, it'll be a surprise for me and a surprise for you. But I do have these two that I need to skein up. Sam, at my request, got me a Nitty Knotty. This is a 3D printed one. So it comes all apart in four pieces. I have not used this yet. My brother Bill got him a Nitty Knotty. And he's been using it like crazy, but I haven't even attempted. So, I know that it's correct to have it to where this end is a different direction from this end. So I know that's correct. And I know you kind of work it back and forth going around it. I'm just not positive on the motion. So we're going to figure this out together. I just have a um, laundry basket down at my feet so that the yarn can bounce around in it. Uh, I'm assuming to catch, catch it in here somewhere. I'm just winging it, guys. I haven't even watched a video on how to do this. So let's see if this is dummy possible. <laughs> I would 
snow up here, up here. Hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking that doesn't look like that's long enough. From what I have seen skeins turn out. Okay, so we're going to hold it in the middle. I've got a hold of the yarn. Let's see if this, so I'm going to have a hold of the yarn. Let's see if this will work. Ah, okay, I think I have a hold of the yarn now. So I'm going to wrap Wrap, 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 maybe. Okay, I think I need to watch a video on this. I'll be back in a bit. Okay, so I watched my video and I found out there is some math involved in this. So I want about 20 grams. I measured, I had a measuring tape here a moment ago. What did I do with it? Oh, it's in my chair that drawer. I measured from the top of the Nitty Knotty here to the bottom and it's about 18 inches. We're going to do four, uh, four lengths. So I divided the 18 by four and that gave me how many inches which was 72 inches that I would have. I took the 72 inches and divided it by the, um, how did I divide it? I divided it by um, 36 so I could see how much, you know, as far as a yard. So that's two yards per wrap. The majority of these they're all sock weight, but the majority of these are going to be about 400 yards per 100 gram, and I'm wanting 20 grams. So out of um, 400 yards to get 20 grams, I divided my 400 by the 20 and found out that I need... 80 wraps I need 40 wraps because each wrap is two yards so 40 wraps should get me about 20 grams and it's just an estimate this is scrappy so but that's the start of my math I also found I was doing something pretty much right on how to get this started so Try not to knot up your yarn by throwing it on the ground. <laughs> I don't know how I did that just now. Okay. So again, I have my basket down here, which is just my easy way um, to otherwise because these are already fairly skeined uh, or, you know, caked up. You take your yarn and hold it at the top. You don't hold it at the middle till you get it caught really well. And we're going to take it from the top to the bottom, to the top, to the bottom, back to the top. Top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. And I said to do that for about three or four times till you've got this caught fairly well. And this is not caught at all, so I'm going to do a little bit more. Where was I? Bottom. Try to catch it top. Bottom, top. I 
that should be fairly well caught. So I should be able to reach in and hold it here. From here. And get my motion down better. This skein, I think, was about 18 grams, so I'm not too worried about counting it. Okay, so <laughs> now I need to hold these sections together before I take it off. I don't want to use up that yarn because I, I don't have extra of it, but I do have more of this than what I'm needing. So I'm going to use it. They recommend four, so I'm just going to pull off four ties. Not measuring or anything, it's just random. Okay, then I'm going to take each section And they show weaving it around and everything. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna do that. I am just, because these are minis. I don't wanna do it too tight because I don't wanna crank it. And I may regret this later. But I'm just tying it off. And I'm using it just a knot because later on I'm going to be cutting these off when I open them up. So there's no, there's no reason to do anything fancy. And I'm not, that way I'm not worried about a bow coming undone. I'm doing it loose enough to where it'll move so that hopefully that way it won't cause a crease in the yarn. Before I take it off, let's go ahead and count, see what we ended up with. So I ended up with 32. You guys are on my phone, so I can't <laughs> do my math right here. But that should be close enough for a scrappy project. Okay, so I have each of these tied off. So now I can take it off of the Nitty Knotty. Look at that. All right, it may not be as pretty as a professional one, but it still works. Okay, so that's one more down, one to go.
not that much left, so I'm just going to keep going with it. Because there's no use having that little bit loose. And I was going to do an extra wrap or two anyways. So as close as this is, since it was something 30 grams. Just in case. as I did last time. And it might be easier to do this without your engagement ring on. <laughs> and if you're wondering how I knew how many grams I have, I have just an old kitchen scale. that I have set to grams and it will count just over a hundred grams. And so I use that to figure out what I have. So slide off. Slide off and I'm ready to twist. There we go. It's on the loose side, but you know, I'm not a professional on this. So now I am just going to take, oh wow. I already threw some stuff in some of these boxes. No wonder I was short. Well, this one has something in it anyways. You can use bags or anything that you can't see through. Wrap them up in a little you know, bit of um, wrapping paper. You can do whatever you want to make your own scrappy um, advent. You can take and ask somebody else if they want to, you know, if you have another Yarny type friend. Ask them if they want to exchange Advents. Advents I know can be expensive. They are a treat. And I don't do it every year. This was my second Advent I have ever done. I did order an Advent for this year. Um, but I got it from... Mandy with um, Mouse Witch Yarn over in England. And I've been buying it just a little bit at a time. She did have them still on sale last I looked on her Kofi shop to be able to buy the whole thing. So I'm just going to sit here and fill up each one of my suitcases. And Maureen does such a great job with these. Uh, she, I don't know if she has any for sale anymore. She only does a limited number. And once she sells those, they are gone. Uh, so no, some, some will do it in as many as they can get. But she does a limited number. She does an amazing job. So um, that's on... You can find her at charmingyou.com. But I'm going to be reusing this for years to come.
apparently I can't count. Because not only since I had that one extra, I took the undyed one out. <laughs> I still had another. So apparently I couldn't count. Okay, so it looks like the airport just coughed up all of our luggage. <laughs> I'm going to shuffle this like dominoes. Then all my airplanes are also in random numbers, so either way, I don't have a clue what's in each of these. I don't know how she did this to so many. There's number little 24. There we go. I have them all packaged up. I do have a little bit of room left over here because she had a um, full skein in there. I'm not going to mess with a full skein, but what I am going to do is some point between now and Christmas, I'm going to make a project bag and I'm going to put it in here and along with a um, some, uh, some stitch markers or something special. Just for the occasion. This is my unused mini sets or minis I have. Got three 10 grams from the first advent I ever had. A couple of, um, these are bamboo that I like to use for heels, toes, and then these two, a, a um, period dyed one and an undyed. That's pretty good for getting mini skeins taken care of. And I have an advent.